All right, we are back again with a watercress or curled cress microgreen growing tutorial. From start to finish, I will show you exactly how to grow one of the most nutritious greens out there. Actually, if you look at the USDA recommendations and rankings, watercress ranks above kale for nutrient density. Now, of course, that doesn't mean it has every nutrient. It just means that the nutrients that it does have it are at an extremely strong concentration. Um, so one of my favorite greens to grow, and I actually like to cultivate it past the microgreen stage because I really like to make watercress soup. If you guys have, have never had that, definitely look a recipe up and give it a try because it's absolutely fantastic. So let's get into what we need. Obviously some seeds. I mentioned many times, I get mine from Everwild Farms, fantastic company out in, in Wisconsin, organic non-GMO. Water, a seed shaker, a container, I grow in a 10 by 20 tray when I'm growing for chefs and restaurants and farmers markets. For this tutorial, I'll just use a little, little food grade container like this. Some soil. And again, mentioned many times, I will use a 50-50 mix of coconut coir and organic potting soil. Uh, you don't even have to use organic if you don't want to. If, if that's not important to you, it will just make your potting soil mixture even cheaper. And I add the coir in to increase the water absorption, so I have to water less often and also to decrease the price of the mixture as a whole because organic potting soils is usually pretty expensive unless you buy it in insanely large quantities, but a dehydrated coconut coir brick that will expand to almost the same size as one of those expensive bags will often cost just about 50% as much. So you can cut your, your raw input cost to grow microgreens down quite a bit by doing that. And since they don't take a lot of nutrition from the soil in the first place, you're really not you're really not sacrificing anything. So what you'll do is fill a container up with soil and try to get it as uniform as possible. As you can see, that's, that's pretty darn uniform. And give it a good mist with your sprayer. And this is just so that once the seeds hit the surface, they sort of stick where they land. Then you're gonna wanna grab your shaker, pop it open, and you can use a glass for this or your hand even if you want. I just use this shaker because I want to get the most uniform distribution of seed on the surfaces as possible, and I found that this is the way that I can do that. Sometimes I'll lose a couple seeds over the over the edge, but it's it's really not a big deal, especially for seeds that are as cheap as this. Crest seeds are, are quite inexpensive. So we'll do this, get a nice distribution here, and just for reference, I'm, I'm just eyeballing this as far as the amount, but in a 10 by 20 tray, I would use exactly one ounce of crest seeds. So let's take an overhead view. Pretty well distributed. Now I'm gonna get this outer edge here a little bit, make sure that there's enough seed right there. Once we get that, we're gonna wanna give the top of it another spray with our bottle. And then we cover it up and, and wait a few days for it to germinate. In a 10 by 20 tray, I would be covering it up with another 10 by 20 tray because you need it to be completely dark and warm. That's what a seed wants when it's going to germinate, or mo at least most seeds want a dark, warm area to germinate in. So I'm gonna wrap this up with aluminum foil and we'll go ahead and cut and stay tuned and you will see the rest of this curled crest microgreen tutorial. Okay, it's been two days since we planted our curled crest seeds, and this is what we've got. Uh, actually, one of the quicker germinating seeds that I've grown. As you can see, there are quite a bit of seedlings coming up, and we're looking at maybe, let's see, close to an inch of growth already. That's extremely fast. Uh, just as reference, I have basil microgreens in a tray right now that are going on four days and barely germinating at all and just shows the disparity between different types of seeds. So what I did here for the last two days was basically lightly mist this, not even too much because the soil's pretty moist and I don't want a, any mold to develop. Um, just lightly mist it. You, you can tell it's, it's a bit yellow right now and that's not a sign that it's sick. It's just a sign that it wasn't exposed to any light at all um, because I put it in a 10 by 20 propagation tray and, and put the other tray on top to black it out. So over the next few days, and I'll probably let this uh, be exposed to light for four or five more days, just because usually I, I, would, I would do a microgreen to about 10 days. This one seems like it's growing fast enough that maybe seven days is enough. Probably get it up to about, let's see, about there or so. 
two, two and a half inches, three inches, um, and just harvest from there. So regimen from now on is expose it to the sun, make sure that it is watered appropriately, um, just because you don't want it to dry out and all these, these seeds to die off almost immediately. That's one, that's one potential danger is you let it dry off too quickly and the roots just almost immediately die and then the plant and the, and the entire crop is ruined. So that's what we're doing. This is day two. We're gonna come back for day six or seven. All right, we're back. This is four days in to the uh, watercress microgreens experiment. You can see extremely quick growing, over an inch of growth already. And we'll let this go for a couple more days, making sure to water it, keep it out here in the sun uh, to see what kind of yield that we can get off of this. And then we'll go into how to harvest it properly and, and all that fun stuff. So good growth gonna keep it watered, make sure it gets some light, and that's about it for taking care of these guys. So we'll come back in a couple days. All right, we're back, and it's been six days since we planted the cress, and it's time to harvest this bad boy. It's looking pretty good. Sure, I could let it go longer, maybe up to 10 to 11 days, and get a really bountiful harvest, but it's pretty long right now, and I let it stretch under the blackout dome, perhaps a bit longer than I should have, but it's all good, it's just going to make it easier to harvest. So let's talk about how to harvest these in a way that doesn't make you want to slowly murder yourself because cleaning and washing microgreens can be an exceptionally time-consuming part of growing them. And so I like to try to structure the grow in a way where I actually don't have to wash them. And so basically the only reasons you'd have to wash your microgreens are if there's too much dirt after you harvest uh, in, in the stems, if there are too many seed husks remaining, and usually that just means you either didn't grow them long enough for them to, to let those husks go, or you perhaps planted them too densely so when the seed husks fall off, they actually are taken up sort of into the canopy as, as, as they grow just because they're too densely planted. Another reason why you would have to wash your microgreens is because there's mold. And if you grow in a way that avoids mold, Namely, you keep the temperature relatively low, you keep the humid humidity relatively low, and you make sure that there's good enough airflow, and you don't use old stale seed, then uh, you really don't have to wash them. And by not washing them, you save a ton of time. Not to mention, you also extend the, the shelf life of the microgreens. So cut and, and dry, these things will last seven to 10 days, if not more, if you wash them no matter what you do, you're not gonna get them back to perfectly dry, and even if you do, you're, you're deleting about two to three days off of the shelf life, if not more. So let's talk about how to harvest in a way that avoids at least the, the root dirt problem. So what, what I like to do is, in a, in a container this small, the easiest way to do it is actually just to tilt it on its side and cut vertically. But if I was growing in a tray, what I would do is sort of pull it back like this and, and cut down like that in sections. And so I use a really sharp Victorinox knife that will go, I mean, actually, I actually just cut this one right here without even trying, you see that? So exceptionally sharp, you want it to effectively slide through with zero resistance um, and, and just slice about a quarter inch above the soil line so you're making sure that you don't get any soil in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this I have two bowls, and I'll, I'll explain why I have two bowls in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and start to harvest. So I like to do it this way in a smaller container because it's a bit easier. So it's gonna come through, make really precise slices, and just sort of drag it along, and I can hear, I can hear them splitting as I do this. Making sure to not get to that, that soil level because I don't wanna pull that dirt in. And as I get to about halfway through, I like to switch it because you'll see the, see how the, the cuts are getting a bit less precise. That's because they're all tilted this, this way. So I'm gonna turn it this way and just repeat the process. Now, no matter what you do, you are gonna get some debris. It's, it's, there's not gonna be a 100% perfect uh, harvest no matter what you're growing in, unless you're growing, I guess, in hydroponic situations. But I personally don't like to do that. Um, for other reasons. So here we go. Um, we've got a pretty good harvest. There's, there's some stragglers on the edges that I'll, I'll sort of come around and, and do. But what we've got here 
is a solid cress harvest. Sure, it's not a lot of cress, but I didn't grow it in a, in a huge container, and, and that's why. So the reason I have two, two bowls is because I, I want to sort of shake this up, get some air through it, make sure that I get enough separation between these greens to shake out any of the particulates. And then I'll just transfer to the other bowl, and you'll see kind of what was left at the bottom. So we'll, we'll shake it over, we'll transfer it. And you're gonna get at the bottom, actually this is a pretty clean harvest, but you'll see there's, there's a couple seed husks in there, there's some smaller bits that just aren't worth that much. And here we go, we've got a really healthy little addition to salads, soups, etc. Let's get a close up view of it really fresh. I mean, it really can't get fresher than this. And like I said, you can store this, make sure you give it a little bit of air and make sure that it's completely dry and it'll last a week or more. I like to just eat these as, as quickly as possible. And if I'm delivering to a customer, it's, it's a bit, uh, a bit longer. So, um, so this has been watercress microgreens or curled crest microgreens, really easy to grow a quick grower and pretty good yield. So if you guys like this stuff, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me grow next. If you have any questions about doing this in general or just comments on the video at all. I, I do all these videos basically for you guys and kind of share what I like to do. So go ahead and hit subscribe and like the video if you like it or share it with your friends and that would really help the channel grow which would basically help me create more cool stuff for you. So this has been Kevin from Epic Gardening. Keep gardening guys and get yourself some watercress microgreens. They're delicious. Take it easy.